Let's talk about the Nesmuk Trio. This is going to be a little discussion video, just for a bit of fun, shits and giggles even. Just talking about that Nesmuk philosophy. Nesmuk is a famous adventurer. You can read all about his exploits on any outdoors blog. He had a system of three blades, one saw blade, one chopping tool, one cutting tool to see him through all obstacles. And it's a pretty good system, it's pretty versatile and you can change it up as I'll show in this video to suit various situations. Now, in front of you here is my ideal. This is where I'm probably going backpacking, all the stuff is packable and I'm um, um, not too fussed about size and weight so I'm probably going on a short walk, stopping and camping, packing up again, going another short walk, camping again. So, what have we got? We have got, these are, oh, these are my ideal tools. These are just, there's nothing wrong with any of these. They're all brilliant. So, taking centerpiece, quite rightfully, is my Grand Spurs Brux. Small forest axe with its beneath the stars leatherworks belt sheath. So this would hang on my belt, probably on my left side. It's less likely to be used. And it is just a devastatingly sharp, extremely well made. Fantastic beastie of an axe. And really, this is about as ideal as hiking or camping or hunting axes get. Just the perfect size. You can still get a forceful chop. You could fell a tree with this, no worries. Take a bit longer than with a felling axe or with a you know buck saw or you know a big bucking saw or something, but you can do anything you want with this axe, and it certainly is, I think, a one-tool option. And I will be exploring that in future videos, that concept of this axe as a one-tool option. Next is the Ebarco Laplander folding saw. It needs no introduction in the world of YouTube, keyboard warrior, outdoor warrior, gear reviews. I've done a review on it. It's got about 36 views because there is Barco Lapland fatigue out there. Something shocking. But that's cool. It's a good tool so it gets covered a lot. There's not really much more to say apart from that it cuts very well. It's quite cheap so it's not going to be, you're not going to be devastated. I'm looking at a silver, uh, silky gomboy at the moment. May well usurp this, but again, three times the price. So this is already a $200 bit of kit. This is a $180 bit of kit. Save a bit of cash and get your $30 lap blender. It does pretty well. You're supposed to spend all your money on your knife or maybe your axe. So. Speaking of which, Falcon even F1. Still the knife that I love the most. I love the strong arm. That was a good one, but... My heart belongs to the F1, just robust as, completely indestructible it seems. I smashed it into a tree, to about there, stood on it, still dead straight, still works. Got a bit of patina developing, but most of that would just sand off anyway with sandpaper. That's just a bit of sap on the uh, 420J layers, so yeah, very sharp. I think the edge is about a 60 Rockwell hardness. The steel on the outside though is in the low 50s, so it's got that flexibility. It's laminated steel. I love my understated handle designs and just designs in general. Just none of that sort of tactical looking. Just looks like a big thick kitchen knife really, doesn't it? But geez, it's strong and sharp and excellent. And you can keep it sharp just on a leather strop. As long as you stay on top of your strop, that's a good little slogan, you can keep this sharp as brilliant little tool. So that's my ideal Nesmuk Trio. Let's look at a different type of Nesmuk Trio, shall we? And what have we here? If it isn't the ultralight backpacking Nesmuk Trio, yes, you can still adhere to the philosophy whilst trying to keep your grams at a minimum. So what have we got here? The cutting tool is the very cool, not as useful, I must admit, but very cool Grants vs. Brooks mini hatchet. This is a is a chopping tool, this will chop, has weight in the head. You saw it in that video where I tested that little Gerber axe. It out chops, it chops well, it out chops little Gerber axe. Very cool little bit of kit, very comfortable to use, very high quality, reeks of quality, oozes quality. Just, just a fantastic little tool. And yes, definitely one of the lower weight axe options out there. And then you've got, as your cutting tool, the very light Mora Swedish Fire Knife. Has a fire steel on the handle, super sharp. Will do all of your knife tasks, because you've got an axe, remember, to do your heavier stuff. So you won't be battening this, you'll be battening this and splitting with this. 
So this will do all of your knifey tasks exceptionally well, in fact. Great gutting fish, gutting game, it's got that very thin tip, it's a very thin blade overall. Very, very high quality product from more Unlight My Fire. It's about $50, so it's not, the price has gone up, it's not super cheap. $50 Australian, that is. It's about 30, 35 US. And then, keeping that little weight down, he's got a saw. It's a very capable little saw on the Victorinox Hiker. What better tool to have on your ultralight hike than the ultralight hiker? Well, it's not as long as the Laplander, but sawing is when you need to do precise tasks. So, for what you need, when you need to separate a limb from a tree, that's what the axe will be for. This will be for when you need to make a tent peg, you need to saw your little notch in, just to help along with your axe and your knife tasks. So that, and this is the, um, I don't know what brand this is. I got this from Olsen's store um, soon after what I got my um, mini hatchet. So I don't know who makes these anymore, but this is a custom holster for the mini hatchet. It's basic, but it works. Four bits of, two bits of leather, four rivets, done. So that is your ultralight Nesmuk Trio. Pretty cool. Let's move on to the last part of the Nesmuk Trio, the last proposed version. And this here, folks, is your car kit or your emergency kit Nesmuk Trio. So what you want here is the maximum utility for the minimum price because these items may never see use because they are in your kits for if bad things happen. So this is in your kit for your car when you're driving across our big fantastic land that we call Australia and you break down and you need to make a fire by the side of the road because you don't want to run your battery down, you're running your heater and it's in the middle of the desert so it gets freezing at night. So this is, this is your car emergency kit, your four drivers, you four drivers out there, this is the sort of stuff you want to have. So what have you got? You got a Mora Companion knife, one of the best knives, nice and light, super sharp. This is the stainless version, which um, I got because I couldn't find the carbon version. Carbon version is fine as well, we live in a dry country, so if you're providing a driving crew in the middle of it, you're probably going to be fine with carbon to sit in the car for a long, long time. Unless you live by the sea, then get the stainless. Brilliant, comfortable knife will do most of your chores. Most people even batten with this and everything. But your larger wood processing tasks will be done quite capably with this Bear Grylls. I know, Bear Grylls Survival Series Ultimate Survival Hatchet thing. I think it's just called the Survival Hatchet. But you saw me do a video on this, didn't you? It chops pretty well. It chops about as well as that little Grand Sphizax. But it is almost disposable because it is cheap. Very, very cheap. It's about $30, $35 off I've seen them in Australia. Um, you know, most of them are about $50, but you can get a good deal. And it's, again, $25 to $30 in Australia. This third tool isn't as cheap. This is just Leatherman. It's a proper Leatherman, so it's, you know, pushing the sort of $80 mark. But because it's a car kit, this is where you've got your saw. So it does have your saw for your Nesmark component. All right. It's quite a long saw as well. It's a good one. Probably longer than that Victorinox one even. So you've got your saw, but then you've got the plethora of other multi-tool tools that are great on fixing up cars. So you've got your files for cleaning your battery terminals, you've got your pliers for crimping back your, um, your hose attachments and stuff. You've got your Phillips head screw for every screwdriver task ever these days. You've got your awl, you've got your saw, you've got your fine and serrated blades. So you pack out the rest of your Nesmark Trio with something that does hit the saw requirement but fits everything else in two for your car survival needs. So that is the third type of Nesmark Trio. And I think that's a pretty good one. I think that's one that everyone should have in their car. So Nesmark Trios, that is my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Probably nothing you didn't know already, but if you like seeing bits of gear, I hope it tickled your fancy. And I'll see you in the next video.